Hello, hello, and welcome to the Love Works show. I'm Nicole Moore, your host, and for those of you who don't know me, I am a love coach, love expert, and love teacher, and I help women attract what I call a top 1% man, a man who is amazing and credible on every single level, and then I show women how to keep that man. So if that's what you're looking for, you're in the right place. So as we're jumping on, um, I would love for you to say hi. Let me know that you're here. So today's topic is inspired by you know my own life. On the Love Work Show, I'm going to be sharing more behind the scenes. Um, for those of you who are interested in what is the life, love life and life of a love coach really, really like. Um, and every single Friday, I put out a video called Flirty Friday. That is on my YouTube channel. Search Nicole Moore Flirty Friday. If you don't already subscribe, go ahead and subscribe there. But what I do sometimes on the Love Work show is I go a little bit deeper. Uh, Flirty Fridays are typically you know, around five minute video. But here I can go a little bit deeper, explain the topics more. So the topic of this video is how to get a man to truly, truly, truly love and care for you. Hey, Julie. Hi, Bridget. Good evening. You must be in Europe, perhaps. Um, so this is inspired by my own life, and I'll share a little bit of behind the scenes. So this um, week, I had my father and my stepmom come visit. For those of you who have followed me for a while, you will know that my um, what I experienced from my dad growing up, my little girl experienced as lack of love and constant criticism and never feeling good enough. And I just really felt afraid of my dad and not good enough. That was Those were the two energies that I got as a child. And um, I've done a lot of work on my end of the street to heal that. But, you know, um, my dad is over 60 years old, you know, he's not really gonna change. And so some of my, before he was coming this week, I have a twin sister and she texted me, hey, Gabby. My twin sister texted me and was like, I just wanna let you know, like I went to dinner with, you know, our dad. She said, you know, he criticized three women. So my dad has always had this thing ever since I was a little kid. It's very, very weird. Hi, Cheryl. He will criticize overweight women. Like ever since I was a little girl, we'd be at dinner, we'd be out in the street and he'd go, look at that fat woman, right? So can you imagine what this was doing to my psyche as a little girl? So he still does that, you know, and he also criticized me as a kid. So he would do this and say, you're fat. He would do things like, don't drink a, don't drink a Coke. You should be drinking a diet Coke because you're overweight. When I was a little kid, I was overweight. So I'm giving you the backstory so you can understand how this all translates. I promise you I'm going to tie it together into you getting a man to truly love and care for you. So. You know, he, he was always very critical of um, weight, you know, my weight, other women's weight. It's this weird thing. He doesn't really criticize men, so maybe something happened to him, right? And um, and not very loving. My parents never said I love you when I was a kid. So that's the backstory. And then my sister's texting me the week before he's coming. Like, you know, he was still, he criticized three women at lunch. My sister's starting a new business, and he told her, like, you should be prepared for your business to fail, just like things like that. So my dad is not has not had the opportunity like I had to evolve, to grow, to take personal development, right? And so I think his parents weren't that loving. Obviously, that's where he's at. But here's why I'm sharing all this backstory with you. Most women that come my way, they are not removed from their childhood experience with their mom or their dad. Meaning, in their love life, they are recreating that. They don't think they are, but they're recreating that. And here's something that I say to every single one of my clients, and this is like a Nicole Moore tweetable, I think tweetable's that Marie Forleo's phrase, but you know what I mean. Like, this is something you might wanna write down. The exact patterns that you used to protect yourself as a child are the exact patterns that will stop you in your love life as an adult. So what happens? You, most of you, if you're watching, if you are having problems in your love life, it ties back to your childhood, right? So you experience things. Like I have most of my clients whose dads abandon them attract unavailable men over and over again. You experience things in your childhood and then you develop defense mechanisms to pretend, protect against the pain. But then those very defense mechanisms that you've developed to protect against the pain when you're in an adult relationship, they don't work. So, for example, your dad abandons you. 
And then as a little kid, that's really painful. So actually, little girls whose dad abandons them, they will sometimes do this weird thing where they put their dad on a pedestal. It's almost like it's so hard to imagine as a child that your dad would do that to you, that you have to like flip it and do this insane fantasy thing where he's on a pedestal and you're trying to win his love back, right? And you develop that mechanism as a child to protect yourself. But then as an adult, you're doing that as an adult. So men come in, they are not really that great. And you put them on this pedestal and then you're chasing them, chasing them, chasing them, right? Um, hi, Rebecca. Hi, Frank. Um, so my pattern was I was criticized, criticized, criticized. I shut down my heart for many, many years. You guys might think I'm like super loving right now and I am. Hi, Ashley. But when I was like, I remember being in high school and my friends would say like, you have like a rock heart. Like I didn't really show emotion. I wasn't letting all of my love out. I became this person who felt like I didn't need anything or anyone. That was my defense mechanism. I felt like my parents didn't love me and they were critical of me. How do you prevent it for your children? Um, I'd love a more specific question. Bridgie, I'm happy to answer that. Um, so my defense mechanism was, I don't need anyone to care for me because I felt so uncared for. I remember in France in the fifth grade, I'll never forget, I went away to Nice, France on a student exchange. So I went to France for, it was like three weeks to, I can't remember exactly the amount of time, but I think it was like three months. And I remember um, we were in a room like in the classroom and every single child got a care package from their parents except for me. And I just remember looking around the room at everyone opening their care packages. And I felt so sad. But as a kid, I couldn't deal with that amount of pain. So my defense mechanism was, I don't need anyone. I've got this. I can care for myself. And I became a very, 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 very capable individual. But it was on my own. So as you can imagine, what did I say before? The exact patterns that you developed as a child to protect you from pain are the exact patterns that are gonna come and bite you in the ass as an adult and stop you. Rebecca's saying, oh my God, that's totally me after my divorce. Yeah, so, um, but that wasn't the truth about me. So the truth about me was I'm a very sensitive individual. I'm a very loving individual. Right. If you're a friend of mine and I have like two glasses of wine, I'll be hugging you <laughs> like love comes out. Right. So I had to open that up in order to get a man to truly care for me, because here's what was happening for me. I had the pattern. My little girl thought my dad didn't really care for me. Also my mom. But specifically in this case, my dad didn't really care for me. Now, of course, my dad loves me. He just is not really that great at showing it. Right. But my little girl thought my dad didn't love me. He didn't care about me. And that developed this horrible feeling inside of, I am not worthy of care. I remember thinking as a kid, literally I would have this thought, my parents are supposed to love me, but they don't, so there's something wrong with me. Now, I'm not saying that's the truth. I'm saying that was my perception. So in order to deal with that, right, I had to develop this layer of I don't care, I don't care. But then that also translated into I don't care about myself. And then, so all this was inside of me. I'm not cared for by my parents. So I'm gonna pretend that I don't need care. I'm gonna be super independent, super high achieving, super capable person. I'm gonna get my love from being highly amazing. That's what I decided. Maybe if I'm really an amazing person and I'm really capable and I'm really perfect and I look pretty and I'm you know, thin and I do all these things and I'll finally be loved. So I developed that characteristic and then I developed this I don't care, but I really wanted a man to care for me. I deeply wanted that, but when I was in that unhealed state, I attracted men who either they didn't care or I always felt like they didn't care. So I want to flash forward to today because this is all tied in, I promise. So my dad's visiting me. My sister's already warning me. Okay, like she went to lunch with him. She literally for a week was like having to like decompress from the criticism. So I'm like, okay, this is happening. He's coming to visit me. You know, I, I shared with Mike, my husband, like what was happening. I let him in. And then I did a lot of spiritual work. On the day that he was coming, I prayed. I did this exercise called spring cleaning, which is a way to clear your negative charge. I reached out to a friend. I let people in. I let them know my desire for this weekend is that 
I am so connected to the spiritual truth within me that even if he criticizes me, I'm okay. And I prayed and I journaled and I meditated and I did all these things. And then he was here. And I have to say, honestly, like he really didn't send criticisms my way. He did like call my son Luke fat a couple of times, but he didn't do it. But here's the moment that happened that made me realize how much Mike really cares about me. And I think you're gonna love this. So one of the things, as I said, my dad, like for some reason, he thinks it's his job to tell people not to eat. So when I was a kid, I remember like I always had this big appetite and I would be hungry after eating like the small portion that was served. And if I asked for more food, he would go like, what's wrong with you? Like, stop, right? So and my, my stepmom is Chinese. She's like, actually, she's from China. So she was cooking all of this real Chinese food, not like chicken with broccoli, like real <laughs> Chinese food. Um, and like a lot of tofu, things that do not fill me up, okay? <laughs> no offense against real Chinese food, it's just not my preference. And so like last night, we're sitting at dinner, and by this point, I'm so tired because Luke hasn't been sleeping, so he's been waking up at 2 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. for a week, so I'm on no sleep. And, you know, my family has been here for, like, four days in my space, and I haven't been eating the food that I want to eat. And, like, so last night, like, I was, like, trying to eat the dinner. It wasn't enough, and I'm sitting there, and Mike can tell what's happening. And he's, like, trying to, like, tell me, like, oh, should I order a DoorDash for you? DoorDash is a food delivery service. And I'm, like, okay, we'll deal with it later. So... I wanted to order some extra food, but I didn't uh, didn't want to have my stepmom see it because I didn't want her to be offended that I wasn't full on her food and thinking I don't like her food because that was like a whole other conversation. Do you know sometimes you're like, I can't. Like I'm a very emotionally evol evolved woman, but there's sometimes where you're like, I just can't. Like I can't. I can't deal with you freaking out about me eating additional food and you thinking it means something about you. Like I just was like, I can't deal with that. And then my dad was there and I was like, I can't deal with him like making comments about how I shouldn't be eating and all that. Like I just felt like I literally cannot. And like Mike was super sweet that day. Earlier that day he told me, he said, Nicole, when you literally cannot, I can for you. And I just thought that was so sweet because he was literally telling me like I'm here for you and in those moments where you feel like you can't I'm there and so he proved it that night so like we literally were in my uh, in my room and we're door dashing I like we're ordering food and I'm like hey Mike it's going to come in an hour because I was trying to feed myself right but I didn't want to go through the whole hoopla of my stepmom and my dad seeing the food coming and then, you know, all of that. And Mike's like, okay, we're going to strategize this. He's like, Mike's like, you're going to, you know, when the, the food is coming, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to get it. I'm going to come in. I'm going to pretend that I got a package. And he's like trying to help me with this. And it ended up the food came. He went outside and he like put it in like an Amazon box that we had. And then he's like walking past my dad and he's like, okay, good night. So he figured it out. Like he helped me. He solved the problem for me. And it might sound like a silly example, but I literally was in tears because I felt so cared for and I felt like I had someone on my side. And how did I get that? Coming from where you now know I came from. Well, the first thing I had to get was that I did meet someone. Because as I said, I was so hyper independent, so hyper capable that I wanted someone really badly, but there was a part of me that was afraid to need, need someone. <laughs> Sherelle's saying that's so sweet. Yeah, it is. It is. I was afraid to admit that I needed someone. Why? Because I didn't want to be needy. So there's a difference between I am unhealed. My little girl is unhealed. And so I, sorry, you guys, my eyeliner is like going in my eye. There's a difference between I am unhealed and I need you. To, to fix this. I used to be there. And when I was there, I was actually attracting men who didn't care. But I healed that piece. But then there was a piece that was afraid that if I exhibited any need, I would go back to the needy place. Does anyone re resonate? Like a lot of women who've lost themselves, they do this. I'm afraid to have any need at all because I'm going to completely lose myself. So I had to have this conversation with myself where I got, Nicole, you are capable. And it's okay to need someone. Gabby's saying he was your partner in crying to get more food. Yeah, right? So the first step was admitting, I need this. Not from a place of, 
I'm not going to be okay. Like I, I really could have had the conversation with my dad and said, I'm just going to get food. I could have dealt with the fallout from my stepmom being like, Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? You didn't like the food. Like I could have dealt with it. And I know that because I've worked on my emotional fitness. Right. But what I had to realize was it's okay knowing that I can do it to still want someone else to do it for me. Does that make sense? I think this is a key piece that women are missing, especially all my entrepreneur ladies who follow me. And it's like this thing of like, we have to be so independent. And there's so much messaging out there that's like, you can't be happy uh, with a partner if you're not happy with yourself. And I think some women take it too far. And they forget that partnership works for a reason. In an ideal partnership, two people are strong individually. And you come together and you amplify each other's strengths. And in moments where the other person is weak, the other person says, I've got you temporarily and vice versa. And so you feel like you have, you really do have this beautiful partnership. And you don't have to be a hundred percent all the time because someone else has got your back someone else is saying when you literally cannot i can for you that's a different energy than i'm so weak i can't do things for myself i need someone to fix me and i feel like women are so afraid to be in that place that they then go to the other end of the spectrum so i had to accept i had to get and accept i need this in my life i need a partner in my life i need someone to care for me and then step two was I had to really care for myself. I mentioned this on my Flirty Friday video. So if you haven't gone and seen the latest one, go and watch that one after this. But I had to really care for myself because as I said, my little girl on the inside thought I'm not worthy of care. So I went very deep into self-love and doing lots of things to care for myself from the self-care and the baths like all of that stuff to to like there's self-care is the the beautifying and the spa time that's an aspect of self-care right taking care of your physical self but then i had to do the self-care that's i'm gonna see you i'm gonna look at you i'm gonna acknowledge you because that's love love to me is ever present positive attention so whatever you're focused on, you're giving that positive love and attention. It's like how I see my son Luke, like I just never think he's doing anything wrong because I always am just like, God, everything you do is awesome. Even if he's screaming, I'm like, I love that you're using your voice. I'm not like, oh, Luke, there's something wrong. You're screaming. I'm like, you're such an awesome kid, Luke. Like, I love how much you express yourself. That to me is love. So I had to give that to myself, ever present, positive, attention and for me that looked like journaling daily there was a while where I journaled <laughs> like I used to sometimes sit in a cafe and journal for like four hours you don't have to do that right now I don't do that I have a son I do five minutes but journaling and asking myself how are you feeling just getting to know myself for me self-care looked like doing things that I loved, filling my life with beautiful things. Like I used to go to like uh, Zumba, 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 Zumba a lot because I love dance, you know, doing things that I loved, giving that energy to myself. And then for me, self-care was about letting in more love. So I looked at who was in my life. I let go of friendships that weren't serving me and draining me. And I, there was a, I remember there was a period in time where I didn't have a lot of friends but I was really focusing on myself and loving myself. And I developed the quality of discernment. Who do I want in my circle? What do I want to let in? So I imagined that I had this velvet rope around my heart because I realized the value of what I was bringing. And I was very discerning about who I let behind that velvet rope. So those are just some aspects of self-care, right? But I had to do all of that to really feel like I cared about myself. And then, I had to manifest him in. I had to manifest in someone who cared. But I couldn't have done that if I hadn't done the inner work to heal my little girl feeling unworthy of care, right? And so then I had to manifest him in. So I teach a lot of ways to manifest. Obviously, I can't share all of that on this. But what I will say is that if you want to manifest something in, you have to use the power of focus. So a lot of women 
they'll write their list of what they want in a man all day long. And they're so afraid that they're not going to get everything on their list that they focus on every single quality on their list. And what I knew, because I understand manifesting, was that's actually a way to not get what you want because your attention is too split. So I focused on what were the most essential qualities that I wanted in a man. And for me, it was very important to have a man with a really good heart who was also had the ability of being centered in himself. Like that was the thing I knew I needed. I knew I needed a man who was centered in himself because I knew that a man who's centered, if he gets afraid, he's not going to run. He's not going to like project on me. He's not going to do that crazy stuff that I had experienced. And I wanted somebody with a really good heart. And I had a lot of other things that I liked. Like I have criteria for physical appearance and like I had all of those things too. But I focused on the most important qualities. And that focus, I believe, is a big key of what how I drew Mike in, who has literally the most caring, loving heart I've ever known. Like I always tell him all the time, I'm like, Mike, I'm a love teacher, but like you just he just knows how to love, you know? So I will say, if you're looking to manifest in a man who really loves and cares for you, are you focused on that more than you're focused on the other qualities? Because what you focus on is what you bring in. And if you're trying to manifest a man who you're like, he has to be above six feet and he has to do this and he has to, and you're focused on all those qualities, what you don't realize is you're actually hurting your ability to manifest that person in. And then there's also how I treated Mike to activate the caring part in him. Um, but that's going to be for another love work show because I literally could be here all day um, teaching you how to get a man to truly care for you. But for the purposes of this video, what I want you to know is how it starts is you healing any of that wounding that is telling you you can't be cared for. You don't deserve to be cared for. Any of that stuff. If you have that, you've got to let that go. You've got to heal that little girl because until she's healed, you keep attracting in the same things over and over again. So that's a really big step. And then it's giving yourself that care. And there are many different aspects of self-care, right? Start somewhere. All you can do right now is the self-care that's like the spa time and the beautifying and the making sure you get your nails done, which I don't have my nails done today, but Mike is actually taking me to um, a hotel that we love to go to the spa there this week to get my nails done because he knows that's important to me. Okay. So it's that, 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 that spa self-care time is important. It's the being willing to look at yourself and be with yourself and give yourself positive attention. That's important. It's looking at your life and being willing to fill your life with things that you love. That's also really important too. Um, and then manifesting that person in and then how you treat them. There's a lot of different aspects as you guys are seeing to bringing in the person who's a really true match for your life. But I want to make sure there, if I have some time for questions. So does anybody have any questions for me today? on today's content or um, any questions at all. Rebecca's saying, yes, I put so much pressure on myself to be this amazing woman, friend, daughter, and mother. It's exhausting. Yeah, it is exhausting. And um, it doesn't work. So what I'll tell my clients, Rebecca, is you try to aim for 90% of the time loving, 90% of the time empowered woman, 90% of the time showing up feminine in your relationship, right? But 10% of the time, give yourself permission to be a bitch, to make mistakes, to go to crazy town, because um, it's too much pressure to be perfect all the time. So does anybody have any questions about this content? If you do, I'd love to know. And I hope it inspired you. I know my story might seem like, I don't know, maybe some of you think it's sweet. Maybe some of you are like, why couldn't she just order the food that she wanted, right? But for me, I literally, I, I'm telling you, I was in tears because I just felt the depth of how much Mike is like, I will do anything I can to help you. And I will do anything I can to make sure that you're safe, that you're comfortable, that you feel loved, that you feel good. And it's really amazing to have that. And the thing is, you get it when you don't need it, but you acknowledge that you do. That might sound a little bit like, um, I don't know what you're talking about, so I'll explain it. You get it when you're not coming from the need, from the place of the wounded little girl who didn't get it from her childhood, so she has to get it from a man to rectify that pain. 
that place doesn't attract it in. It's like my father abandoned me. I need to make this unavailable man choose me to rectify the pain. That place doesn't attract it in. That is a, I call it a need with like the little like lines coming out of it, like not a healthy need. But you get it when you go, when you understand, I am healed of that. Like when you're really healed, you get what you deserve. And then when you ask for it from that place, it's, I need this in my life because I am worthy of this in my life. And when you need it, when you don't need it, but you acknowledge that you need it, that's when it comes in. So like I said, it's amazing that Mike was willing to be my advocate last night and be my partner and, you know, safely bring the food into my room without upset. But I know my strength as a woman and that if he hadn't done that for me, I would have still taken care of myself and been okay if that makes sense. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Love Works show. Like I said, go ahead and watch my 30 Friday video if you haven't seen it, because that also shares how to get a man to truly care for you. And I'm subscribed there. And um, I'll be sharing more in upcoming Love Works shows about um, how I treat Mike to get him to truly care for me. And if for those of you who are realizing that your little girl is ruling the, ruling the show in your love life and she's the one that's attracting the wrong people in um just just be on notice get and keep your man is where we heal that we don't have a round open right now but i'm just dropping it in your ear that um when i do open up that program again in that program my clients who are here know we go way deep into your little girl um so you can actually be transformed so I had the experience and I have the experience of my dad is pretty much the same as he's always been, but I could still attract in a man that isn't a reflection of that pattern. And that's a reflection of what I truly want. That's possible when you heal this inner little girl stuff. So I hope you have an amazing, amazing day and I'll see you next time for flirty or not flirty Friday for the love work show. <laughs> Bye ladies.